Yes. I'm sitting right here at my job. See you all. You're not listening to what I just told you. You never asked for my ID. You never said good evening, sir. You never did none of that. You got out, you. <laughs> yeah. So I went from the chair into the, the door. Position. She yeah. never wants the K9 unit come up. She already, she already had an officer at the back, the back there to see if anybody come out the back. He got tired and walked his ass up here. Uh, the, the K9 unit was there. I, like, so she's not listening to me because she was high. <laughs> I say, nice. I told the K9 unit, I'm yeah. like, can you call the watch commander or dispatch? He told me, shut the fuck up. We're in charge here. And then told me if I don't come out of the laundry, he's going to send the dog in on me. I'm at my job. I'm not wanted. They didn't get a call from dispatch. I'm not. Are you going to come and threaten my life? Oh, 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 I'm a taxpayer. I'm a registered voter. <laughs> Tom comes into the studio completely messed up. I'm, I don't know what. He, he, he's crushed up some Viagra and he sniffed it right off of the console. Mr. Albini was not happy. Mr. Albini finally left the project. He said, I can't. I can't deal with this man, right? He'd been chasing the man around the room with a microphone, and Tom's like paranoid, thinking it's a GoPro, and we're trying to explain to him, and at one point, Steve just, it, it reminded him too much of when he was recording the refreshments, and they all, instead of getting serious about, like, fixing the uh, cowbell part, like, they, would, they didn't want to work, right? They were there, oh, give us some, give us some Chinese guitar that will, uh, we'll just sign it. And Steven, you're going to what? And he said, we're going to to just take this guitar over here, one of your guitars, and we're just going to sign it, you understand? And Steve was like, he, he was mind boggled. He, he, he'd never heard that, so he asked him, he asked him, well, what is the real issue? Like, what are you trying to do? And they said, we were told by Sony and yo yo ma that if we sign anything we sign right now because there was some sort of logistical lawyerical thing that they were doing behind the scenes that they knew no way in hell is king of the hill going to start out with a cowbell they weren't going to allow that they were going to take that away from Steve who had been working so hard, so hard. I'd see him all night, just ding, ding, not getting the sound and moving microphones and renting equipment and then throwing it out. And he's such a perfectionist. And finally, like what I've been telling him is that he went back to, got to go back to cassette tape. That's a lesson done. But Steve gets him upset, understandable. He, he'd already, it was bringing up memories of I mean, Kurt would misunderstand what a producer does um, and he would constantly write him things, it's in the journals, like, hey Steve, here's how I think you should film uh, Rape Me. And Steve 
walked right back up. Well, okay, you know, and he'd give him some pointers, but then at the end he'd be like, hey, Gert, I'm, I, I'm a, a record producer. I, I just adjust sounds and, and knobs and things. I, I, I never think visual. I, I don't work for it. Right? But good one. We'll see later. He will just be, and he's perhaps stoned. Um, during most of the journeys. Yeah, and people don't like that. They think that's a bad light on him, but it's not. If you look deep, you actually see exactly what he was feeling. And so, if people like uh, the observator say things like, oh, I don't, I don't think he li would like it because he would think it's half-assed. It's, how, how can something like be right then you're saying he wouldn't like fecal matter because it was not a originally re recorded on metal they like the chicken thing listen to me I think, I think he enjoyed that I, I believe that what this came off and this was through my last sale where we're setting up this shrine where we will be doing a live chat on April that's right you're saying why why on the 5th would you try to channel Kurt that'll be explained 33 only subscribe to we will all connect from wherever we are at this time at this shrine that he told me he prefers it to under the bridge because the graffiti is just not good and it wasn't his favorite place anyways because the water right was always rising up on him he wasn't a good swimmer and he always had rocks in his shoes we still don't know see people say that he wasn't suicidal, why was he always putting rocks in his shoes and in jumping bodies in of water? bodies of water? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 also, I also, I know that we want the real answers and we'll get them. But not by the bench. The bench, he told me, it's over. He said, uh, oh, it used to be a spiritual place for me on the original planks that were taken to some museum and then uh, somebody bought it, took it back. He got mad. He said, I want, to, I want my planks back. And he sent it to this place that restores wood to it. So they took, they stripped it down, right? Took the graffiti straight off, all the good wood. And then they, they sanded it. This is a day, day, day's process. They're so good at this. They do this all the time. And he told me that they, 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 they finally varnished it three times and, and now it's beautiful, but there's really no spiritual reason to be hanging out there either. So he was okay with this place and it will be a worldwide in our psyche. Once we, we find out what happened on that day and that Part of the thing leading up is we will be talking to other than Tom Grant, which is a totally different story. Uh, we will be talking to Kurt's dealers, and they know a thing or two, especially this certain one in Las Vegas, who also turned out to be some sort of impersonator. He did like. Uh, he couldn't do Elvis because something. He didn't have the accent. I pray the Lord my soul to take. And 
Williams, he did like a, like a, like a fat Robert De Niro. He couldn't do the skinny versions or the, uh, uh, you talking to me? He like uh, La Mata, he where he's like, or the, uh, hit me, hit me again. I'm gonna meet you, you or you're gonna meet me. me. I, you know? Hit, hit me again, again. I but he, don't he did no. other impressions. Hit, I, I said hit me or I'm going to hit you. You see, that kind of impersonation he could do. Or uh, a Will Smith, amazing Will Smith he could do. But uh, this dealer impersonator knew other impersonators in Las Vegas who, who were able to do very good impersonations of Kurt Cobain. And they... He, he liked to go to Las Vegas and disappear. It wasn't in the motels that you have been seeing. He would go to Las Vegas because there were so many Kurt Cobain in person. He fell right in time. And there's pictures you will be seeing where he's in a bar or something talking to two other impersonators. You can't tell who's who, but you can tell it's him because his eyes are squinting a little. There was a little more... In what happened there, people? Did he, uh, or long? Did he shift? That's the did only to... difference that you can tell. So you have to look closely. But we're going to find answers through this because he... now it hey. makes like, oh, the, the photographer saw him on a day after, so he must be okay. But so and so saw him it's over like here, third. yeah, uh, eating like sweets. Shifting from third to fourth. Yeah, so mm, he liked his uh, Nesquik. He liked his strawberry. He would just, anytime, right? Mix in anything you give him. He just put it right in his Nesquik or his cereal that he liked to put club soda or root beer on. I've, that part of the, of the uh, reports, I'm, it's right. Maybe that guy isn't that guy. Everybody. Maybe Tom Grant has a secret life and there's something else we don't know. And Courtney Love, right? You're suspicious. Oh, I'm suspicious. The way she's been treating me? As you see through what she did to my condo and where I'm living now and how things are going, it's a different lifestyle that she's kind of thrown me into. All that because she does not want the truth to come out, and it will. I'll just keep hiding. I'll keep hiding, you're not going to find me, and, and my people will protect so me because I am a YouTube icon for peace and justice, keeping the DoorDash community in liquid assets and, and not but making money. And you know, I, I'm doing my part, but I disagree with the type of mask. I like this one, I'm going to show you. That's another part in the series. It's Right on there.